like one individual and not both or uh sorry i meant to record this so i was not listening fully and then i couldn't understand <laughs> would you mind repeating your question you're recording so my question was um in this situation doris did only one partner does only one person listed on the purchase and sale and that's why you were wondering about this because you didn't oh, know let about me, yeah i did not know about this one let me check it i just found out yeah i think what brought it to doris's attention is the title report <laughs> didn't know what disillusion of marriage meant right well, add, add question from me, uh, from what Doris and Jay just asked is, if you take a listing that is owned by a husband and wife and they have not gotten divorced or dissolution in the marriage, you can't get one signature. You have to have both. That's right. Okay, oh. thank you. So yeah. the owner's name or uh, Boston, only one name. Boston. I think Boston is the family name. Your okay. microphone's not working. Yeah, it's not. Uh, so there's only one name there. On the only one the name. Sale? Yeah, like a Boston. But both of them signed like a, it's a, through like an e signature. I don't know if it's signed by one person or two person. What is the address or MLS number? Oh, yes. Let me. So one six. Eight zero eight nine five. Hang on, hang on. One six eight zero. One six eight zero eight nine five. Eight nine five. Are you showing nine. us, Ed? Oh yeah. Can you see it? Sorry, thank you. So there's the. I'm trying to find it, Jay. There it is. And it's pending. And. On, on, on yeah. one they didn't put the owner's names in the listing, so did it only populate the purchase and sale as the name Boston? Yep. So that's that's a mistake on the listing broker's part, because what people need to realize, and hopefully you guys all realize, is this field right here, owner name and owner name two, you have to fill those in so that when people write offers on your listings, the purchase and sale gets populated with their names. When you don't do that, now Doris, you need to prepare an addendum that says the seller's name shall read Nicholas whatever Boston and Ashley L. Boston. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> and escrow is gonna insist on that. So okay. mm -hmm. let me speak to it a couple different ways. Like the reality is it only has one name because the agent screwed up. So that the fact that it only has one name, Jay, this is more for your question, isn't an indicator that there's one spouse that's not cooperating, right? It's because they just put the word Boston in the listing and that's all they put in the listing. Now let's talk about if it were the case that it on the purchase and sale, it said Nicholas D. Boston, and it didn't have Ashley's name. That's not the end of the world. We, and really Esper, just have to establish, did Ashley give Nicholas power of attorney, or did Ashley already quit claim the home to Nicholas? So there's a couple different scenarios where it could just be one person's name, even though county records still shows two. Right, because yep. you know, mm -hmm. we would just have to. So, get, because as a buyer's agent, we want to make sure that our client gets marketable title. And if if it's owned by two people and only one person sells it, you don't have marketable title. Yeah. So, so should I give the list agent a call uh, today and uh, to verify this information? Yeah, you could call the agent and say, hey, do you want to prepare the addendum or shall I? Mm -hmm. The listing didn't have your client's name, full names in it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then when uh, Ed, Ed, do you mind if I uh, ask a question in here? Let me, let me finish my point and then I think okay. something and then I'll come to you, Jason. Uh, 
And while you're on the phone with the agent, say, by the way, is it amicable between Nicholas and Ashley? And he'll I'm sorry? ask Nancy, when you talk yeah. to her about the addendum, ask her if it's amicable. Amicable, amica uh, what does that mean? Amicable means that they get along. Oh, amicable, amicable. Right. Use the word get along. <laughs> yeah, just say, do they, do the buyer, do both sellers get along? Is there, do they like each other? Do they like each other? Well, no, don't ask that. Cause we already oh, yeah, don't, don't, yeah, don't say that. Yeah. So, Jay, what, what did you want to add? Well, this, this, it's not any different than, I mean, you have to look it up if you have, they put in, in undisclosed. Right. You have to go in and go look at the report, and then you have to make an assumption that both parties, in this case, husband and wife or whatever, um, are both the sellers. Because yeah. you can only assume that. Yeah, and, and I'm in the habit of, when I write offers on homes where it says undisclosed down here, mm -hmm. just one click away from getting their names. So just click on mm -hmm. the parcel number, and mm -hmm. then put your offer in the name of the people. Yeah, Pablo, what's the, where by the Form 17? I don't know about Form 17, but... Form 17 normally has both a buyer, a seller's name there. <laughs> No. I, I'm laughing because who fills out the form 17? Or the seller. Well, a lot of times either the, one or the other. A lot of times the agent fills it out. And oh, that's not not right. Well, sure. I fill them out all the time. Oh, come on, Ed. No, you're you're assuming that I'm filling it out without the seller present. You 100% can be the one with the pen in your hand. And I would encourage you to be the one with the pen in your hand because if you let a seller fill out a form 17 without you being there, if they can do it, it's going to take them like two hours. If you do it with you there so that you can explain things like when they ask, what are CC and R's? then you can fill one out in less than 45 minutes. So back to my point with Doris is form 17 is filled out by people. So if that's mm -hmm. like most trusted source of information, I would, I would rethink that. Mm -hmm. Public records, these names are pulled from deeds of trust that were signed in escrow and notarized and had photo ID accompanying them. That's a lot more stringent criteria, right? And, and really the takeaway I want Doris to get out of this is when you write on a home where you mm -hmm. can tell that they have an incomplete name as the owner. Okay. Name, yeah. Treat it like what Jay just said, undisclosed and do the research and write your offer with their full name. Full names. Mm -hmm. Don't have to later do an addendum, right? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good okay. call, Ed. Okay, Jason. I, just, you, I was going to say it's crazy because it was one click away why we put in a disclosed. Well, that, because it populates the, you know, all the apps on people's iPhones. So if I'm Russell Wilson and I'm selling my house, I don't want my address all over the internet and my name with it because then I'm gonna have a parade of cars coming by my house, right? Well, I wanted Russell Wilson's address because it'd be a lot more money than my house. <laughs> you just gonna move in or what? Well, if he wants to adopt me, I'm okay with that. All right. Now, Jason, you wanted to add something, I think a minute ago about the divorce and the proper names and all that. Well, I, I, I was gonna ask you a question about, uh, can you go back to the listing? Yeah. Um, and, and this is just my opinion about MLS, uh, uh, guides and, you know, rules and regulations. Yeah. How does a listing agent get away with listing it saying Boston and not putting both the husband and wife's names on there? They're just sloppy and they don't have a managing broker that teaches them not to be sloppy. But is that, uh, is that, does that uh, 
violate regulations? Uh, I don't know. Probably. I, w I would think it is because just like when some, we, you and I had this conversation the other day, well, not the other day, but uh, like a couple months ago. And I said, why can people say that they are uh, advertising a view home and it's not a view home. They take a drone shot from the top and then it yeah. looks like it has a view. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're two different issues, but there are similar issues. One is a subjective opinion, right? Like the view behind Jay's head, no one would debate is that's a great view. But then there's going to be listing brokers that think people will want a home with a view. So if I just put the word view in my listing, it'll help me get more buyers. And that's not true. It creates animosity, right? Like you. Yeah, that, that's the thing, Ed, is that when I have a view, uh, somebody wants a lake view or a sound view home, and I, and I put in the, the specs yeah and 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 then and then i go look at the the homes and none of them have lake views they have a drone view right so guess what that's uh false advertising i believe and you feel misled right yeah and it wastes my time and theirs yeah so it's all not, right i'm done it's not a smart thing the difference with names though is this is not subjective this is just an agent being lazy Well, I wouldn't have done that because if I was a listing agent, if I had a buyer come in, I would want both of them to come to the table. Right. Otherwise, you're wasting time. You're exactly right. You, uh, all, of you all of you should think of your listings and, and filling them out mm -hmm. to, as complete as possible to make it easy as possible for people to write offers on your listing like that made doris's job harder all because the agent was too lazy to type nicholas d and ashley l it's all the she had to do and she didn't do it and now she's creating work for both herself for doris and both of their clients and that's just stupid so don't be a nancy <laughs> that's fine. yes Yes, but well, sometimes it could be another yeah, reason. Can we do that? Don't be a Nancy ever again. Right. So, let Doris, finish your question, then Janice, I'll come to you. Okay. Go ahead, Doris. You uh, were going to say oh, something. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, so, one more question. One of the clients asked uh, if, like, uh, if I were, um, like, if they make an offer, uh, but, uh, but the deposit, the earnings money never deposit, is there any, like, a liability? Uh, they could get sued for specific performance. It's a breach of the contract. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they will lose the house. I mean, did they change their mind or something? No, just a general question. Like, for example, yeah. if they make, they make an offer to one of the house, but they did not deposit all the money, it's the seller, like the seller will show them, right? But The seller can, but they probably won't. Mm -hmm. Here's okay. the thing. It reflects terribly on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to have a reputation of being somebody that writes offers that never, you know, deposit earnest money. So yeah. you want to really talk in, in enough detail with your clients to sort of suss this out and figure out is, is my client getting cold feet? Because mm -hmm. we don't want to have a false start and, and deliberately not deposit earnest money. I mean, it, it happens, but it should only happen when they absolutely love the house and the day after their offer got accepted, they got fired from their job or something, you know, like that. Yeah. yeah. So don't, the moral of the story is you don't want to write offers where your client isn't convinced they want the house. Yes, absolutely. Right. Can, I, can I add something about with the names? Sure. Junior and senior second third all that is also very important my first deal i did was a short sell and it was a young couple they were the the sellers and we got all the way up to close and when you know things really start moving along and they were wondering why all this money was going why they weren't getting as much as i had said that you know 
well, they weren't getting any money, but they owed a lot of money because the tile company brought in the senior who was the guy's dad who owned years and years and years of child support. So we had to go through all of that, um, you know, making sh or verification and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we don't really think about it, but senior, junior, first, second, third, or second and thirds really do matter. I, th I think about it. I'm a junior. Uh, uh -huh. I actually, on my credit report, I have a credit card that was open three years before I was born. Uh -huh. um, but it's a great point, Robin, that you make, and, and it's actually the title company's fault because the minute we open escrow, the first thing escrow does is they send what's called a statement of ID to all the parties. And the whole purpose of that form is to establish who they're dealing with. So it's one of those forms where it says, you know, what, what's your address? What has been your address for the last 10 years? Right. By any other names. You know, where, where's your employment? What's your, been your employment for the last 10 years? So that they can, you know, really narrow down and determine, is this Ed Lane Sr. or Ed Lane Jr.? Because then we're going to do a title search based on all the clouds on title that might be associated to Ed Lane Jr.'s name. If yeah, otherwise known as or whatever alternate ID. That's right. Exactly. All right. So Janice. You had a question that we made you wait on. Okay, yeah, I do. I have two questions. Uh, one, uh, regarding the Redmond House, uh, what kind of language should I use when I say furniture is included, included with no value? Yeah, ba basically that, but I'll put it in the chat. Um, I learned to leave all furniture from fire and furniture has no value. Something like that. Okay, thank you. The second yeah. question is regarding uh, a CMA. Okay. Uh, let me open up the MLS. Is it a listed home or a potential listing? Uh, it's potential listing. Do you have an old listing number or an address? Yeah, let me copy the the wording you just said before, you know, I forgot. Okay. So let me change the wording. The listing, the old listing number is 118-3741. Sorry, I was sending a chat. 118 Three seven four one. Yes. Is that for memory, huh? That is a really tall house. Yeah, it's um on a slope with beautiful views. Looks like a Barbie dream house. Huh. Look at that killer deck, though. Okay, Mike, that was funny. Barbie dream house, that was funny. Wow, look at this. Yeah, actually, I sold this house a few years ago to my client. The view is beautiful. Yeah. Look at the cool quartz blue vein countertop. Matches the lights. Giant master. Yeah, the house, the, I mean, the layout is kind of weird because it's multiple levels. Right. Wow, look at that. You're going underwater here? It's a very unique home. All right. And the driveway is kind of difficult to park a car. Is it? It's just a view. It's so good. Is it? Ed, it's Ed, It's so funny when you when you freeze because it's like you're there and then you just like like you're shaking it off. <laughs> yeah, 
I just, a little thing pops up and I go, oh, they can't hear me. And I wait for it to go away. And then I resume. <laughs> Uh, is this like a steep driveway? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of steep. Okay. All right. And they're thinking about selling it. Yeah. And it's 3,600 square feet, built in 1988. What do you think? It's uh, county size 32 something. Is that because of the basement? I think so. We can figure that out. I stepped away. What is, what do you, what do you think it is, Janice? What do you think the pricing is going to be? She hasn't said yet. I haven't said anything yet. But she's about. I, I didn't miss, I didn't miss anything. No. You did not. So what, what do you think the value is, Janice? I think it's over a million, but how much over, I don't know. Okay. Let me. I'm always very honest. So there's a thousand fifty on the ground floor. Mm -hmm. Eighteen seventy on the second and third floor. And there's fourteen ten in the finished basement. That's 4330. <laughs> so I don't know how they calculated all of this. So let's do it again, all right? So second floor is 820. Oh, wow, and the basement's even bigger than that. It's just 1410 or finished. I can't tell if 1870 is The, oh, it's, I see what it is. Do you have the county record up on your, on a split screen or something, Ed? No, are you guys not seeing the county record right now? Oh, I, see the I, county records. I thought that was um, realist. Realist is the county record. Uh, okay. They're, I'm always in the habit of going to the county website, I guess. You might have gotten that habit from me because that's what I do. Oh. Okay, so uh, 1,050 is the ground floor, the main floor, right? Mm hmm 820 is the second floor. Those two things combined give you 1870, which is the above ground square feet, right? And then the basement is 1730. That's what gives you 3600. But not all of the square feet is finished. So if you take the 320 feet off, that gives you 3280 living square feet. Does that make sense? Yes. So do, do you know if sometimes the basement that was unfinished gets finished and can be done without permits potentially? Do you know if the basement is fully finished now? I don't know because after I sold the house, I never been in this house. So I need to figure that out. All right, so I'm gonna use 3,600, but I'll do a bigger than 20% difference. So mm -hmm. say 2,500 to uh, 5,000. 1990 or older. There's three within a quarter mile. I wonder what they look like. Closer is better because these are probably on the slope and have a view as well. Nope. <laughs> okay, did, does this house look like a 4,200 square foot house to you? No. <laughs> 4,500. Janice, can I ask a question? What's 
Is there a hole in the ground that we're missing? Can I ask you a question there, Janice, about yes. the things? I'm just kind of wondering, um, you said that you know it's over a million, you just don't know how much. Uh -huh. What was the stumbling block that you kept running into that was making you try to, that wasn't giving you what the information you needed? Well, it's probably the uniqueness of the house. I think the uniqueness of the house. Oh, yeah. Wait, Ed, is that a different? Is that the same house? You said forty-six hundred square feet. The last one was, yeah. That 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 craftsman style home was forty-six hundred square feet. Forty-five, yeah. That is a hole in the ground somewhere in there. Well, it's got a full basement. So it's probably 2,200 up and 2,200 down. Yeah, but the top didn't look that big, but I get it now. Well, it had that kind of... I'm just saying, if you if you were curb driving by, you wouldn't look at that and say that's 4,400 square feet. Oh yeah, no, that's, that's exactly what I said. Yeah, you'd have to go in to get it right. So here's one that has great views, Janice. That is fantastic views. I would say probably a better condition kitchen. And which year this was built? I think it's newer. Yours, I think. Don't you think? Let's see. 1947. Oh my gosh. But it's and been, smaller. It's been updated. Right. Yeah, it's updated. Smaller, but uh, more above grade square feet, it looks like. Yes. So the uniqueness of the subject property is because it's on uh, um, the driveway slopes and also the basement. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, the topography uh, and the view. Uh, and the floor plan because of the topography. Okay, I understand. So this one has uh, got a similar view. It's got a superior f floor plan because it doesn't have to have four little floors stacked on each other. Um, but it's also smaller. But it's uh, superior in finish because they updated. This kitchen is decked out. Let's see if the bathrooms are. Subway tile. Couldn't see the basin. This house um, is also a weird house, I think. <laughs> what makes you say that? Because of the, uh, you know, all the uh, bedroom is like an uh, attic. It's not like a fully uh, a bedroom. Oh, because of the dormers? Yeah. Is that built up against, oh, it's a daylight. Okay, got it. They got one bedroom on the main, two on the upper. Yeah. Uh, master is on the upper. I don't think people are necessarily put off by that. There are certainly some buyers that wouldn't want it, like me, because I'm 6'6". Six, six. I would whack my head. You see this kind of uh, bedroom? I think this one is the closest comp, just topography speaking, and yeah. it being a daylight Those. basement and all. Those were all within a quarter mile. Now if we do this, we liked that one, right? Is that the one? Yeah. This is the one we just saw. Yeah. One. Yeah, this one uh, is uh, closer to that. 
This is another unique house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of unique houses. I don't think this is necessarily a comp, though. Why do you say that? I think the architecture kind of promotes a... Yeah, I, I think the cuteness of it gives that perceived... Per, that perception of value. It just seems more... I don't know. See, I, I'm the opposite. I think it's a comp because it's a funky house and so is ours. And it's on the same street. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. You cannot not validate that. Here's one that's 2590 square feet. Killer views. Dated. Oh, look at that. It's interesting. They got like a marble inlay cutting board. The rest is tile. Everything's pretty. The subject rich. is in Matthew Beach, and this one is in Sun Point. I think Sun Point is more favorable than Matthew Beach. I, I don't know. That's right. just my opinion. Ooh, here's a tree house like yours. Oh my gosh, this is another really weird house. Oh, I love that house, but I'm too old for it. <laughs> this, look at that. They like to entertain. Holy macaroni. Cool library. Look at that map and the clocks. This is cool. That's very cool. I bet this was like a professor from the UW. Yeah, a traveler of the world. Yeah. Parking over seven for seven plus. What's that? Park you see the marketing remarks? It says yeah. parking for seven plus. Oh, wow. I don't necessarily think that's a comp for us. It's. it's I don't good. either. It's like ours, but it's <clears throat> bigger and nicer. But no view. But no view. This one is not a good comp. This is in Matthew Beach, but uh, looks nicer. Yeah, but no view, right? A li little view. A little bit of view, but uh, much looks nicer. Wow, you would think they'd have a great view the way it's positioned. Yeah, you need to cut some trees down. Yeah, there's lake. Oh, look at that chair is a wood sculpture. Oh yeah. That's cool. They just like, they just go out in the middle of the night with their chainsaws and hope that nobody hears them. That's right. <laughs> uh, remember when? That's one of my running jokes with clients. If we come across something like that, I'll turn to the husband and go, "Hey, do you have a ninja suit and a chainsaw?" And they'll laugh. So that one's uh, inferior view. That's interesting. They listed at 1.1 and got bid up by 200,000. Uh, just last month. Yeah. So we've only got two comps so far. That's because husband and wife both have ninja suits and they're going to get a better view. Yeah. Oh, wow. 32, let's get down here to the view. Lake view. 32 drops to 11. Those were our two columns. That one we decided we didn't really like. That one we didn't like. That one we didn't like. That's a new one. Adult family home, so that's not going to help us. 3170 square feet. Got kind of the weird topography. Nice. Probably nicer. Thank you. 
It's a finish site. Yeah. So it's in Sand Point. Yeah. The Sand Point way probably is uh, a main road, so that's not necessarily a good thing. There's the view. This is actually in Cedar Park. So it's further down from Sam Point. I mean, it's on Sam Point Way, but. This must be, uh, has some slope as well. Yeah. It's perched. Must have slope because it's perched. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a nice kitchen. Uh, I think, um, You know, everything kind of points to one, two, one, two, five. Even the ones we're passing over. If you, you haven't been in it since the conversation has come up, right? No, uh, actually I haven't been there since I saw that. So it's been a few yeah. years. I mean, so one, sorry. I was just going to say it looks like one, two, five to me, but subject to the condition. You know, if it's in rough shape, I would go down. If it's immaculate, I would consider even going up. Okay. So choosing, did you choose both of those that had the view? Because there was one kind of comp, but it didn't have that, just had a peekaboo. Yeah. I mean, the ones okay. I did not select. It's not that they're not an indicator of value. They're not, right. they're not as good an indicator as these ones. Yeah. And then just wait to see what that pending is going to be. Right. You, yeah. The only thing I remember for that house is the views. It's a really nice view uh, in the living room and a nice finish uh, in the main floor and the rest. Uh, only thing I could remember is kind of a little, you know, unique, I should say, weird, you know, layout. Yeah. Unique isn't always great with real estate. It makes our job harder. All right. Mike Smith, you have a listing that you're going to take live. Correct. And you want help finding it or what? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have pictures for it yet. That's happening today, tomorrow. We want it to go live Thursday. Okay. So do you want me to just review it or just focus on the remarks or what? Uh, no, I think, it should probably, I think I should probably go through the whole thing just to make sure I didn't, you know, actually completely do something terribly wrong. Did you input this all yourself? Yes. Nice. Good job. Uh, thank you. No worries about my question on the licensing. I didn't. I didn't do my homework on it yet. So. <laughs> okay. Time. Uh, so you're going live on Thursday. Tax ID. You haven't decided on a list price yet. Correct. Because that was the second part of my question. Was we kind of leaned toward bringing it on at 600 without a review date, but asking for a 72 hour expiration. But then yesterday you talked about inventory numbers and I thought, well, maybe I should reconsider and go with the slightly lower number and put in a review date. Were there any actives? Uh, last time I did it last week, the, the actives are a little older. I didn't, I didn't do, I didn't look at it this morning. Um, there was one that had come on and sold in a matter of a couple of days. It was priced at 595 and looking at it, it was a really, it was a good comp. Um, Ricky's place was a little nicer, a little better updating, but the other place had, had a nice view and like a legit view. Okay. Do you want to do a CMA or do you want me to review the contents of your listing? Uh, well, let's look at the contents of the listing, please. Okay. And if we have time, we can do both. But. Cool. Uh, listing expiration date. Did he sign a listing agreement? No. 
Why are you doing anything without a signed listing agreement? Because uh, I'm, I don't have a good reason. So make that a matter of practice. Don't like I don't even tell them what my CMA is until they've signed paperwork. Right, I understand. Done, but I'm I'm drilling this in for your benefit and everyone else's uh, because that's just not a good habit to get in, even when it's relatives. Now, I'll give you some advice when you do get the paperwork signed today, right? Uh, well, it'll have to be tomorrow. I won't see him today, but yes. Why? Because it's not 10 a.m. and the day's almost over or what? <laughs> uh, just anyway. You're, you're a hard man, Ed. You're, you're busy. Okay. But when, when you get an expiration date, when you have that conversation, here's what I do. Uh, you want a six month listing agreement and have it expire on the last day of the month. So if I were signing a listing agreement today, it would be December, January, February, March, April, May 31st. Does that make sense? Yes. And you know, sometimes people will be like, are you nuts? It's not gonna take that long. I know. We have no intention of being around till May. But this is what my firm uh, requests. Blame it on me, right? Sure. But yeah. they can't get out of it any time, right? They can. Is that what you said at your phone? Correct. Yes. I just wanted to yeah. they can get out of it at any time. So good. I'm glad you said that because I didn't. And that's a hundred percent true, Mark. And that's what you can say to people, Mike, which is if they if they buck, say, Well, it doesn't really matter because you can fire me at any time. I'm giving you the cancellation agreement, right? Right. So they go, okay, if you say so. Um, it's not in a co-op, right? Correct. So we can say no to that. I always put Thomas Brothers in the map book thing. I don't know why, because <laughs> because I don't have a Thomas Brothers, and neither does anybody else. Can you show your page, please? Are you kidding? We Thomas Brothers. You talking about the old Thomas guide? Yeah. Oh my God! <clears throat> You're throwing some vintage there. Okay, uh, I always put something cute in the SOC comments because you deserve it, is what I put when I'm offering a 3% SOC. Your bill, effective your bill, is it updated or have you looked at it? It was updated, but I, you know, I looked and realized it said effective your bill was 79. Okay. We can put that, but you don't want to put that because it's updated. I don't, I don't know. There's built in 79, the effective year about was 79. Wouldn't get older. Like I, I, if it's updated, I'd leave it blank. Oh, okay. It is updated. They completely redid the exterior. The exterior? The um, uh, the building, the building itself, they redid, they replaced the uh, siding with. Um, but you're not you're not selling the building. This list not a listing of the building. What does the right. exterior look like? What does the exterior look like? No interior. Oh, the interior has been all redone, repainted, all new floors, all that. Uh, okay. Model that. You you can say 2020 C remarks. Oh, okay. I mean, was it done this year? Uh, last year. 2019, see remarks. Boom. Okay. Right? Make sure you get the virtual tour stuff in there. You Is this an additional tax ID? No. Oh. You don't need uh, to list the same tax ID twice. Okay. You got yourself in there, a good job. Manager's name, manager's phone, cap, at or above rental cap. So they're already at the maximum? Correct. Right. 
HOA contact name and phone? Uh, we talked about that specifically and actually technically it's Ricky and he didn't want his name on there. Okay. I knew that. I was wondering. All right. For your own it's good for your own records though, you know, the notes you keep on a listing to have that information so as you're going through it, you know, just put it in there so you won't have to waste your time trying to find it when you're in a trying to put out a potential fire. Sure, but since it's my son, I actually have all that information. Oh, it's your boy. Aw, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I'd be in big trouble if I didn't remember his name. Yeah, how old is he? Do you know 31. if the building is FHA approved? Sorry to interrupt you too. I do not. You know the name of the building? Queen Anne Court. You guys can keep talking. I'm just going to do a search. Mike, how old is your son? 31. Ah, oh, sweet. Your Queen Anne Court. Approval status is rejected from three years ago. Okay. Can't believe the president of the HOA let that happen. I guess I should have a talk with him. <laughs> I square him away. All right. Taxes, I assume you looked those up. No senior and exemption, no right of first refusal. Does the dues include anything? Oh, I had that filled out. Let's see. Um, shoot. Uh, Common area maintenance, probably. Yeah. The um, he doesn't pay a water bill, so earthquake insurance. Common area. Ugh. Earthquake. Garbage. Garbage. Sewer and water. What? Water and sewer. Water include. Yeah, water sewer. There's a security system. Service or a system? Oh, it's got cameras. Right. I'm going to leave that blank. Uh, it's not a common interest. Form 17 is provided no special assessment. Project approved by FHA is no. What are the schools? We never want to put buyer to verify. That just shows where. Uh, okay, I, I don't know. I'll find out. Okay, please please update that. Uh, okay. Owner's phone is left out. Do you have a form 7B? No. You need to get a form 7B in order to withhold the owner's phone. Okay. And upload it to the supplements. Uh, in the showing instructions, you said the property is vacant. Correct. But here you said it's owner occupied. Oh, well, uh, it wasn't good. Right. That just didn't, had enough to do that. Didn't stick. Any, no view or anything? No. Then I always choose territorial if there's no view. Okay. Lot details, I'll assume those are correct. CCNR or parking is common features. Elevators, no cable TV. Well, but it's 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 all done by the individual. I mean, you can get it not provided. That's what this means. HOA okay. use cover cable TV is the other field. Okay. Yes. If we don't check that, the buyer will assume there's no cable TV for the building. Oh, well, there's he has cable TV and high speed internet access. Fire sprinklers? Uh, not in the unit. Okay. Exercise room? No. So high speed internet is available. All right. Laundry? So the laundry is in the unit. In the unit, okay. Uh, 
rooftop deck, security gate, no nope. trails. First floor unit, four story building, 12 units in the building. No restrictions for pets, cement plank exterior, flat roof, home face of Northwest, remodeled, yes, new construction, no. A one level unit, dwelling type. I guess it's attached. Storage. Has two storage, just one on the balcony and one in the garage? Correct. All right. Uh, for green, do you know if it's standard frame or steel and concrete or what? I don't know. All right, we can leave that blank. Here, no leased equipment, right? Correct. It has radiant heat, huh? Yeah, and the ceiling. Laminate is the only floor covering in the whole place. Yeah, it's the same. They replaced it. It's it's it looks like it, it looks like wood, but it's not. Ricky said it's laminate. It's really nice, but I was a little probably uh, luxury vinyl plank. Okay. That plank in the bathrooms. Yes. All right. I assume you got this all correct. Model unit located in Lower Queen Anne. Kitchen was torn down to the studs and completely updated appliances, soft post cabinets, new lighting, master bathroom addition and pull back. Also updated new flooring throughout. Living room has a convenient wet bar, high walkability score, bus line to downtown, secure lobby entrance, and parking building, exterior and roof recently replaced, fully funded HOA occupancy at rental cap. Those are good remarks, man. Did you write those? Uh, yes. Good job. You box look at here. Two keys, one for lobby, one for second unit. Offer should provide seven hours to respond. The lock unit hitch and turn lock, not doorknob. Gotcha. And then you just got to do your driving directions. And it's 10 a.m. So. Mike was born to be an agent, huh? Yeah, dude, awesome. you nailed it. Good that job. Awesome. Thank you. Let me know if you have any other questions because I know we kind of went fast and there is still a couple days before you go live. But good job. I'm impressed. Thank you. I will probably touch base with you uh, regarding the price and whether or not to do a um, review day. Okay, yeah. We can even do that tomorrow on success hours if you want. Okay. Mike, are you doing an open house? Uh, I haven't decided. Tomorrow's training for MLS, everybody. Oh, yeah. Yes. All right. I got to jump. Have a great day. Thanks, everybody.